diesel truck. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the garage. So it is Labor Day weekend. I hope everybody has a fun and safe Labor Day. Enjoy your holiday. Uh, I personally will be laboring, uh, working on Labor Day. Well, it's just kind of fitting, isn't it? So anyhow, tonight we are working back on the race truck project, but tonight we are doing our data logging. Uh, we're going to get into data logging, what it is, why we need to do it, and how we're going to go about it. So I have laid everything out on the back of Caitlin here. We are going to be attacking the data logging. You know what? Let me step back first. So what is data logging? Data logging is basically what it sounds like. You are recording or logging data. Um, so you're going to basically record any information about the truck that you need while you're doing whatever you're doing whether it be sled pulling drag racing um dynoing and all you're doing is it's an the, the ability to go back and check everything out and just see if all the systems are operating appropriately where you need to upgrade you know or your egt is real high uh what's your boost to drive pressure ratio all that kind of stuff um when you get into the real advanced shit you know, guys are looking at G-forces and stuff like that. Probably a lot of things that I don't even know about, but, you know, drive shaft speeds, all kinds of stuff. Basically, if you can get a sensor on it, guys record it. Shock travel, uh, just a, there's a ton you can do with it. Our setup, how we're going to go about this is more of the simplistic way. Um, you can spend a whole ton of money on data logging stuff, um, but to me, this is the most cost-effective and really the best for your hobbyist if you will um setup rather than going for like a full race pack where it's the whole dash and all that so what are we doing um we're doing a two-pronged approach um and this actually i want to give a shout out to my buddy trevor uh, this is actually how he runs his truck and if you don't think that this is enough he makes double the horsepower that we do he's up in the 2000s so apparently it works um, but big shout out to you, Trevor. Thanks. Uh, this is all after looking at your setup. So what we're doing is first we're starting with our EFI Live B2. This is going to record all the information coming from the OBD2 port. Um, and I'll explain why we're doing this and this when we get to that. Um, anyhow, so this will record all our information. And I already have Hardway's uh, BBX file, they call it. It's like black box logging or something like that. Um, I have their file on here so I can just hit record on this and it will record all the data. I can go back and look at the data, um, but I can also take that file and I can send it to Ryan at Hardway and he can look at the tune and say, hey, we can make adjustment to this fuel quantity or whatever it is. And, you know, this is kind of like an industry standard and has been for a long time. Now, there are other things on the market that probably do about the same thing. And I say probably because I don't have them. I don't have any experience with them. I'm just kind of assuming. But your Easy Link and your MM3 are pretty advanced. So I'm sure they will do everything that the V2 does. But if you're looking into this stuff and you don't already have EFI Live, because the AutoCal will do it as well, um, check with your tuner or whoever you're thinking about using for a tuner and just, just make sure that that's enough. So... The second part of the approach is in these black boxes right here. Here's the main thing here. Here's our peripheral stuff. Perif Here's our accessories. So I'm going to open this up and we'll check it out, see what we got. So there you have it. We're going with Edge. This is the Edge CTS-2. Nice little 5-inch touchscreen there. We have, oh, got to have our stickers nice heavy duty stickers whatever um but you know all this instruction manual all that kind of bullshit that comes with it usb cable obd2 cable five zip ties and the suction cup mount i don't plan on using the suction cup mount um i never have had good luck with these with my mini max or anything like that i always end up coming out to the truck and they're laying on you know on the dash or by the cord so we're not going to be using this uh, hopefully at least that's the plan so this is all your standard shit you get with anything our peripherals our accessories if you will we're starting with this this is the eas system this is why we are going with the cts2 basically they have expandable external sensors the reason we're going with this like two-pronged approach to 
data logging is the EFI Live is great. It records a lot of information, but the problem is the truck. So the factory sensors on the truck will only show so much. Like boost, I know on the Mini Max, you will only ever see 32 pounds of boost or 34, something like that. I think it's 34. Um, but there's limitations there. Also, um, actually, I think these six sevens might have come with an EGT probe, but normally you don't have that kind of stuff. Uh, so we need to expand that. Also, there's no you know transmission temperature. We have a different transmission in here than came factory, so that transmission temperature sensor would not do anything. So we ne we need external sensors. That's where this EAS system comes in. So this is one of their accessory bundle kits. As you can see, they have three different ones, which is a control kit, which has an EGT sensor and a power switch, which that is nice about this. We could actually set this up to run our transmission coolers and our engine cooler, which I might do. I haven't decided on that fully, but they have a competition kit, which is one EGT probe, one temperature sensor, and 100, zero to 100 PSI sensor. For most people, that competition kit will probably cover everything you need, but we went with the data logging kit. So this gives us two EGT sensors, which we'll only be using one right now, two temperature sensors and two zero to 100 pressure sensors. This is your EAS cable. Here is one of our couplers. Here is another one. This is for the accessory. So this is for like our temperature probes or our pressure probes. Um, here's the other one of them. Here's the other one of this. This might be our EDT probe connection. Here's our wiring for our pressure sensor. Another wiring for our pressure sensor. Temperature sensor wiring and temperature sensor wiring. Um, our two EGT probes. Oh, we get about 20 zip ties in this box. And here's our sensors. Two pressure sensors, zero to 100. And actually they're, they're ISPRO pressure sensors. I had ISPRO gauges on the truck. So you might be able to get away with just plugging these, these uh connectors in we might not even have to change our sensors that's cool so you got those and our two temperature sensors and our two egt probes so that's that's what comes in this data logging kit we also have this other eas box and all this is is two more um ports for like a temperature or pressure sensor, which I'll go over why we need another one of these because we're going to be data logging a little more than what this kit's capable of handling. And then our two wire harnesses for that. And look, more zip ties. We're going to have plenty of zip ties after this. The last box to go with this is our gauge mounting kit. Um, I got this so you can use it on the... It's for the pillar mount, but I figure we can use it in probably any gauge setup we got. Um, I just kind of got it as a precaution to mount the thing. Uh, but we'll see. Now, other things I got. I got this cheap uh, gauge pod from, it's off the Amazon. It's like seven bucks or something just to mount this, hopefully. And I also got two 300 PSI pressure sensors. Um, I believe I just got these off the Amazon to see, see if they'll hold up and see if, you know, you can buy sensors that are $100 to $15. These are the cheap ones. We'll see if they hold up. If not, we'll get the expensive ones. So like I said, with this two-pronged approach, the EFI Live uh, part of it is going to take all the information from the factory computer, put that in a file we can send off, uh, but it's not expandable, which is where the CTS comes in. Now, the other thing with that, there are other platforms that are talking about sensors. Uh, banks, for one, they have their little gauge thing. I called them. And they said they're probably looking beginning of next year to come out with that. And the guy wasn't real clear. He wasn't real sure of how expandable it would be. This EAS system, from what I understand, you can add like eight of these. So that gives you 16 sensors, which is great. And the guy at Banks really wasn't sure. But I would also don't feel like waiting. The other people I talked to was GDP Tuning. So with your... Easy Link Auto Agent, they have a monitor and an app. It's all Android based so they can upgrade it and all that. 
they said that that's going to be expandable, but like how far expandable, the guy really couldn't give me any solid information. It'll probably grow into something like this if I had to guess, but it's not there yet. And it's still even a couple months out from coming out with the first revision of it, if you will. So we need the CTS-2 to get our external sensors recorded. The other good thing about the CTS-2, which I don't know that either of those does, since this is running off the OBD-2 reading that, you can't have this also reading it. I know they make splitters and stuff, but once you start communicating to the ECM, it just throws everything off. Um, when I was looking at the data logging stuff for this and just playing with it a little bit, if you have your CSP5 switch on there and you have this data logging, you turn the CSP5 switch, this kind of shuts off or, you know, goes haywire or whatever. It just, it stops talking to the computer. So you can't have these two things running that way. But your CTS2, you can buy another kit and I don't have it yet. So we're not going to be able to install that tonight. You can run this off the battery and they make that kit. So if you have a 12 valve, you have a data logging option. You don't need something that is has to have an OBD2 port. You can you can use this on anything. You'd use it on your lawnmower if you wanted to. Um, it's it's that versatile. So this is a great option for a guy with a first gen or a second gen that's a, a 12 valve and doesn't have an OBD2 port. I know some of them actually do, even though I don't know what it's recording. But anyhow. So you can use this thing on anything. We're going to be running this off that 12 volt power source and this off our OBD2. So let's get to installing all this stuff. One thing I noticed right away, getting this stuff out of the packaging, um, the guys at Edge, they seem to make a quality product, anything I've seen of theirs, but really, you couldn't have a little wire loom on here, you know, make it look a little spiffy. You just want a bunch of colored wires running all over the place. I mean, I can understand your harnesses, but really, you, you couldn't loom this up? So I completely forgot to mention what we're going to be data logging and why. So the first two are boost and drive pressure. There is a boost gauge on the truck, and there's actually a drive pressure gauge that used to be on the truck. Um, there is a guy on the eBay who sells a harness, so you can fit right from this to that drive pressure gauge on your truck but the drive pressure gauge will only read up to 75 pounds. We're putting out 60 pounds of boost, we know, at least. So 70 pounds is not gonna really give us the information we want. We need, that's why we have the 300 PSI sensor, um, because we wanna see boost is basically, as you know, air in, drive pressure's air out. So you want perfectly, all the air going in is coming right out, but that that's in a perfect world. We just wanna, record these things so we don't see say 60 pounds of boost going in and we got 120 pounds of boost or 120 pounds of drive pressure going out that means the turbo is restricted we need a bigger exhaust housing we need a bigger wheel on there we need to fix that issue so the next thing is egt we're just gonna have one egt probe for right now um, eventually down the line we will probably record all six cylinders just so we, we can see if something's going on the other ones or trans pan temperature and trans converter temp. We've had a lot of converter issues, so we are gonna record that. Um, and that way I won't have to just look at the gauge. When we get done, I can say, yeah, when we went in stage, we were at this temperature. By the time we completed the pass, the converter got up to this temperature. And I can say, this is how hot it got. Line pressure, that's something I'm sure guys record or look at but rather than just throwing a gauge in the truck and taking the truck for a drive and calling john and telling him hey here's our pressures is that what you'd like to see we can record that and if say something happens in the valve body or whatever we can go back and look and say hey when that converter locked up we weren't seeing 200 psi of line pressure we were only seeing 150 you know and we can talk to him and try and avoid any more transmission issues with that the other thing is fuel pressure. So that will allow us to read the pressure coming out of the air dog feeding the CP3 pumps and let us know whether we're maxing that air dog out, whether we need another one, what's going on, and just making sure that fuel pressure stays where we want it. 
So that's what I'm planning on recording right now. Eventually down the line, we may expand this. Um, that's the other thing with the CTS-2 that's nice. Since it is just a normal monitor, if we get to where we're getting serious with the race truck, like more serious, like serious, serious, that's a whole lot of serious, isn't it? Um, anyway, if we get to where we're really into this thing, like deep, and we did go to like a race pack or something, I can always take this and put it in Kalen or anything else. Um, all right, let's put this shit in. One eternity later. Tonight, this simple task turned into something that we really didn't get much done. We changed all our sensors out. We made a couple harnesses up and ran them, though they're probably not going to be ran there permanently. And just, I don't know. It, shit did not go well tonight. That, this has just been roadblock after roadblock after roadblock on something simple. You know what I mean? If we were doing a transmission install or head studs and we hit some snag that we didn't see, that, all right, that's a little bigger job. All we're doing here is running wires and hooking sensors up. This is the kind of shit you should be able to do in a couple of hours. And I spent all night in the garage flailing the hell around. So I'm sure you can tell I'm a little bit irritated. Uh, partially it's with myself. Um, another thing I forgot was with the drive pressure gauge, I don't have our copper coil for that, so I couldn't even install that sensor, um, let alone run the wiring for it. But it's just, I'm at a loss. Tonight sucked, bad night in the garage. I thought we go, we, I thought we were gonna have this nice data logging video. I'd be able to show you guys the whole process, but no. Nah. This is going to be a two-parter. Anyway, I hope you guys liked the video. Subscribe to the channel. I'll check you on the next one. Get out in your garage. Get the wrenching on your truck.